Hey, everybody. So, uh, behold my stuff. Jason brought over Astronauts Eternity, and I'm showing off just regular Astronauts. This is all his stuff, by the way. So if you haven't seen my first video, Astronauts is a deck co-op deck building game where you uh, go against a big bad. And in this case, it's some random Power Ranger thing. I forgot what I called him. But the expansion finally came out, and we actually enjoyed this game a lot. We played it a few times, and I remember beating all the scenarios, and we're kind of done with it. Jason says otherwise, but I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure we played everything and beat it. So with that, he got the expansion, and he went with the all-in. I don't remember what the original Astromax mat looked like. This is the expansion mat. He also got the upgraded player boards for the original Astronauts and this accessory pack, which is kind of a weird accessory pack. The way this was packaged was also really interesting. We took the plastic wrap off, but it was shrink wrapped with the player board expansions shrink wrapped into it. And we took it off because we were looking for card sleeve count because uh, I'm out of card sleeves and I gotta go pick some up later. So I wanted to know how many to get. But this is the Kickstarter exclusive all-in of Astronauts Eternity. A little weirded out that they actually don't put a card number anywhere on the box. It was uh, kind of confusing. But as the story goes, it's been centuries since the Astronauts, the stalwart defenders of the galaxy, vanished without a trace, leaving the powerful star core scattered and lost. But when a group of ragtag scapper, uh, scrappers come down to salvage a wrecked spaceship, they stumble upon an astronaut, six star cores, and a legacy long burned under the ice. Will they have what it takes to set up, step up, and be heroes? Will they have what it takes to become the astronauts? Astronauts is a co-op deck building game where each player takes up the mantle of an astronaut, a powerful defender of the universe itself. Unlike most deck builder players, and astronauts will never shuffle their decks, meaning it sets you up to your own tactical combo. Fill your star core with everything from solar cells to magnetic waves and use that energy to add powerful tech and weaponry to your arsenal. You can even power up star core itself to perform your character's unique special ability and help turn the tides against the four world-ending bosses in this epic campaign. And a little video here of uh, upgrade your deck, defeat intergalactic enemies, and defend the universe. So one of the funny things I noticed when we uh, first took this off I like how they have the discount Guardians of the Galaxy. We have, like, you know, Mantis we have at home. Royalty-free artwork Star-Lord. I'm guessing Gamora. That's Zack from the original one. I don't know who that's supposed to be. And I was saying that was Rocket. But it's kind of funny that they picked that for the art style. So, no art in the box. Sides of the box, we got Terraforming Mars. Ares Expedition, four Terraform Mars. Flashpoint. That is an interesting idea for a game. If you ever played Flashpoint, uh, let me know. Maybe I'll pick that up and try it. And then we have uh, Aeon's End, another game I have not played, but I've heard it's actually pretty good. So, if you're in the comments, let me know. Maybe I'll actually go get it and try it out. We have our player cards that are uh, damaged. Object of the game, Does is this the rule book? Yeah, even on the contents, it doesn't have a card count. At least it's a good feeling manual. I don't know if they actually added anything. It's been a while since we played, so I'm gonna have to compare the rules. We have a narrative booklet, pre-flight. It's just a campaign. Post-flight, pre-flight. I feel like this is a story campaign. Okay. Two mats, one token sheet, one tarot card, one deck box, two card dividers. Why does this? Start at two. Two, three, four, where's one? Pre-flight is. All right. Two mats, one token sheet, one turret card, one deck box, two 
Fair, two mats, tokens, tarot card, deck box, dividers, mat, token sheets. To I am curious. Maybe this will be a spoiler section. We have the Galactic Hole Galleon, or the Black Hole Galleon, Diarmath, Dyrathan Behemoth, and the Shade Sculptor. So we've got a Robotic Lamprey. Uh, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing that in that Star Captain Harlot, or Harlow. I don't know, i got to go find the video for that. But I'm pretty sure that or it's a knockoff of every Japanese anime Senkan Yamato thing. And of course the uh, Wampa. Not uh, a lot of creativity in picking stuff. Cool. Now Oko, the Golden Samurai. Why not? I guess it's better than a lightsaber? Uh, active during your main phase, deal damage equal to twice the number of equipped weapons you have. Discount Star-Lord, Caleb. Activate during your main phase. Attack with one of your weapons. Your allies can locate star up to four cards. For each card discard this way, increase the weapon's damage by two. Why does he have goggles and an eyepiece? That, that doesn't work. Ah, Mantis. Dasana. Activate during your main phase. Attack with all your weapons. You may lose any number of slots to turn that many weapons from your discard pile to your hand. Valkyrie? Is that you? Reshi. Activate during your main phase. Power up the home world. Then any ally draws cards equal to the amount of power the home world has. Why not a space monkey? Of course they have to call him Scuttlebutt. Activate during your main phase. Choose a card from your sabotage deck and place it on top of the boss deck. What is the sabotage deck? Is that a new mechanic? The love child of Gamora and Groot, Sunshine. Activate during your main phase. Choose two of the following options. Destroy the top card in any number of supply decks. Gain a slot. The homeworld gains their health. Well, that's pretty cool. Zack! Zack is back. Activate during your main phase. Any player gains a scope token, or players will lose four scope tokens to deal 15 damage. That sounds pretty good. And why is Scuttlebutt with the... Uh, ah, this is like a mix of Dracula and just edginess and nonsense. Captain Cadiz. After during your main phase, if you have 10 or more cards in your discard pile, take an additional turn after this one. Otherwise, gain two cards that cost five or less from this play and place them on top of your deck. That seems like a really cool ability. I like stuff for free. Fusion Parasite. Aren't you from the original? Okay. I don't remember dials. One empty baggie. Team attack. This is a giant token. Oh, two of them. Now, the home world and team attacks. Starburst finale. Discard three equipped weapons. Discard four cards in hand. Spend five energy. Reward. Defeat all minions at play. That's seems pretty cool. Messiah 4. 27 health. Active during the player's main phase. The home world gains two health. You may shuffle a card from the dust boss discard pile into the boss deck. Is that good? Hmm. I don't remember. Now oh, we have more home worlds. I guess those are Kickstarter things. Or not. Drath, 30 health. Active during any player's main phase. Active player gains 3 health. Any player gains a slot. Reference cards for boss side or player turns. Now right, here's a promo cards. Why did they put all these? There's another team attack in Homeworld. So, 
we have another team attack. Discard four. Discard a weapon that costs four or more energy. Lose a slot. Spend five energy. Reward then ten damage divided any way you choose among minions and bosses. Cool. Another homeworld, Centurion 7. Active during any player's main phase. Any ally draws five cards. Love card draw. What is this? Personnel file, shield bow, designation shield bow, everything is shield bow, starting hand shield bow, starting deck shield bow, okay. Shield bow, this card is not discarded when you have zero health. When a player would suffer damage, if shield bow has at least that much health, shield bow suffers the damage instead. How do we put health on this guy? And then we have combo cards. Blazing Justice, when a player X activates their ability, you may gain a card from the supply that costs four or less and place it in your hand. And then we have Falling Star. When a player X equips three weapons or more in one turn, you may equip a weapon from your hand or discard pile regardless of slots. There's only four of these character promo cards. So for Group Gamora Love Child, Infinite Coil, Fuel, Gain Chain Energy, Gain a Slot. For a Zookeeper Dracula, I don't, I don't know what else to call her. Phantom scope, Phantoscope. Attack with an M. Attack with a player's weapon. Increase its damage by two. Place that weapon on a player's discard pile. Any ally may discard a card. If they do, you power up. Rentech 3.0. Deal three damage. Get a slot. And Mantis. Lunar Echo. Gain one energy. Return another field you have played your, this turn to your hand. Another team attack planet homeworld combo, it looks like. Eos, 34, active during any player's main phase. Reveal the turn order deck, return in any order. No knight left behind. Destroy a card in your hand that costs three energy or more. Discard a weapon that costs five energy or more. Power down twice. Any player sets their health to ten. This can exhaust, this can target an exhausted player. A randomizer and so these are just organizers, nothing special. Oh, that's nice. They punched out all the cardboard tokens for you. I'm always a fan of this because I actually just hate punching out tokens all day. Little markers that go into the recesses of the clear boards. Galleon, so let's see, after night specific stuff. Stop one C. J3, four, one B. Oh, this could be a little interesting. One A, one B, one C, two, three, four. And stop in. I guess this is a campaign mode expedition. Now, this is going to be hard for me not to spoil when I sleeve all this up and box it up. Our cardboard modifiers. For all the bosses, except for the parasite. <laughs> wow, Yeti has a bunch of them. Four for the spaceship and three for the hydra or lamprey. Three, four, and seven. What a weird. Eh, whatever. Continue on with the other effect cards. We have uh, Mother, Nightmare, and Mother, Normal, and Expert. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine cards for the Shade Sculptor. Obsidian, Conceal the Path, Shivering Stinger, 
Sing the Stars, Dance in Darkness, Convergent Devour, Phantom Pursuer, Feed My Essence, and Siphon the Light. Another combo card. Tag Team Thunder combo. When player X gains a card that costs seven or more, you may gain a card from the supply that costs five or less and place it in your hand. Two Knight Randomizer cards. Battle one and four cards. Shade Sculptor difficulty, standard normal difficulty, advanced expert difficulty, legendary. Okay, they're just difficulties. Then of Solaris Engine Fuel, gain two energy if you have a maximum number of slots. The homeworld gains one health. This is uh, new. Solaris Cell, gain two energy. You may destroy up to two cards from the top of one supply deck. And then it has Afterburn, attack with any player's weapon. Place that weapon in that player's discard pile. Rithalkiel Bot. Tech. Any ally may equip a weapon from their discard pile, regardless of slots. Tolaris Barrier. Any player gains a slot and powers up, or an ally draws two cards and destroys a card in their hand. Solaris Spear. Deal three damage. You may place this card on top of your deck. Cosmic Boom Boom. Deal four damage. If it defeats a million, power up twice. Another Cosmic Boom Boom. Solaris Dual Blades. Deal 4 damage. Any player may discard a card. If they do, gain a card from the supply that costs 4 or less and place it into your hand. Solaris Fusion Core. All players reveal their hands. Deal 7 damage. Deal additional 3 damage for each card with Solaris in the name revealed this way. Quantum Comma. You may destroy any number of cards from your discard pile. That's actually pretty cool. K3 star. Gain one energy or destroy a card in your hand or discard pile that costs more than zero. Gain a card from the supply that costs two or more energy than the card destroyed. Kinetic katana. Deal one damage. If you have two or more other equipped weapons, increase damage by two. Motherboard. Gain two energy, overcharge top card of your tech supply. And then the rest is that. Okay. Kind of weird how they organize these packs. Because that's all Shade Sculptor stuff. That's whatever the mother is. The battle cards, randomizers, and then we have the Black Hole Galleon cards with Swashbot, which I think goes with the Black Hole Galleon. Swashbot minion, capture a card with an energy more defeated. No, well, they're all Swashbots. Okay. Yeah, these are all the boss attack. Captain Rustbeard. So this all goes to the Black Hole Galleon. And then we have two more Knight Randomizer. Or, no, that's Shade Sculptor. Have another combo card. Rushing Tiger. First time player... X defeats a mini, turn power up. Scatter shooter, invention weapon, deal five damage divided however you choose to the bosses and any number of minions. Attack, deal five damage divided however you choose to the boss and any number of minions. I feel like that should have been in there. Then we have these sabotage cards and the rush should be the normal astronaut deck. Captain Cadiz randomizer, Scuttlebutt randomizer, and the battle modifiers for the Black Hole Galleon are here. Diversion, Distraction, Smoke Bomb, Boo, Flash Grenades. Okay, there's five, two of each out of ten total. Any player gains a card that costs two energy, or... Any player gains a card that costs four or less from energy from the supply and place it on top of their deck, place this in the boss discard and draw another card from the boss decks. Distraction, any player gains two health, place this in the boss discard pile and draw another card from the boss deck. 
Smoke Bomb, the home world gains three health. Play this in the boss discard pile and draw another card. Boo, any player gains a slot. Any player equips a weapon and place it in the boss discard pile and draw another card from their deck. Flash Grenade, home world powers up. Place this in the boss discard pile and draw another card from the boss deck. Seems like we're missing two randomizers, unless they're in this stack. Due to some printing errors at the factory, some cards in the first printing of the Orion system and the accessory pack were printed too light. We have reprinted those cards so you can match the base game. You should replace the lighter printed version of these cards with cards contained in this pack. Okay. So are there reprints of the first? I remember seeing these cards, so yes. Don't remember that one. All the power cores, the blaster. Wow, they did not add a lot. So I'm guessing these are all the starter cards, because that's blaster, starter, power core, starter. I remember some of these cards, like I remember that, and the Energy Blade. It's a little disappointing. Draw Halo, Ultra gain one health, gain two energy, gravitation feedback. Gain two energy, any ally may discard a card. If they do, the home will power up. So I guess these are new cards. Hadronic Halo, gain one health, gain two energy. Gravitation Feedback, gain two energy. Any ally may discard a card. If they do, the homeworld powers up. Shimmering Cloak, you and an ally power up. The homeworld gains one health. Treadblade Whip, deal two damage. The homeworld has no power. The homeworld powers up. Spine Biter Cutlass, you and the homeworld power up. Attack two through damage. Is that the same weapon? No. Okay. Or maybe it is. The Whip and Sword. <laughs> it's the Threaded Cane. Minogenic Seed. Deal 3 damage. Any ally may discard a card. If they do, return a card that causes 0 energy from the discard pile to your hand. Razor Arm Blades. Deal 3 damage. Afterburn. Power up. Super Mega Cannon. Gain a weapon from the supply that costs 6 energy or less. Deal 5 damage. Sonic Blunderbuss. Attack. Deal 1 damage. Afterburn. You may discard a card to, to gain a card that costs 3 energy or less. And Zapper, gain one energy and deal one damage. Yeah, this is really the discount Guardians of the Galaxy here. It's really what it feels like. I guess the monkey is supposed to be Rocket, since the monkey seems to love guns. Uh, Sunshine here is definitely Groot. Now, Oko, I am guessing it's Drax, because Drax has blades. That's uh, kind of funny and a little sad. <laughs> But whatever. You gotta find some inspiration somewhere. Might as well take it from something Your new map. Sorry I don't have the original map to compare it to, but like I said, this is Jason's stuff and he has no idea where the map went. It is very vibrant and colorful. It looks the same as the old one as far as I can recall. I thought there was a tracker, but I guess it's dialed, so I gotta open the other box and do a comparison. But everything pretty much looks the same. We still have the six market deck slots. I don't remember if that was there, but I remember the home world was up here and the health thing was up there. The boss deck there. Difficulty, the boss mat, and boss cards in play. So the mat looks the same. So these are the upgraded player boards that replace all of season one from what I understand. I don't think they changed abilities. Like these guys look exactly the same. Let's do a comparison.
All right, we have Silas here. Active during main phase, gain five health. Active during main phase, gain five health. Well, they look the same. Yeah, they are the same. Huh, they're exactly the same. They're just way thicker. Well, that should help with the markers, because the markers didn't stay in very well. Well, at least the new boards are just as thick. So, that's cool. And the accessory pack. A weird... Definitely don't need it. Because it's just dividers. For the characters. And more base cards, I believe. Tons and tons of power cores. And blasters. Alt art versions. So, not really necessary. There are a lot of these. Jeez, that's a lot of power cores. What's the purpose of this again? Accessories have... Ah. Accessory pack contains all the card dividers, blasters, and power cores you need to separately store each night's starting deck. Okay, that's because you want to store them in the deck. So, saves you some management. I don't think you need the base game. I think it's a completely independent big box expansion slash base game. So, if you don't have the original Astro Knights, you can just pick this up. It's a little different than how most card games work. But I have to say, that's actually not a bad thing. I mean, the reprints of the base cards kind of not great. But if you don't have the base game and you're not interested in the base game stuff, it actually works out. So, 50-50 on what's good and bad about it? This is how we have the original Astronauts stored. I do like these little deck boxes. They're really nice and convenient for storage. I don't remember what these dice were for. Oh, we do have dials. Okay. But we don't have to sleeve all the base game stuff, so that's not too bad. I do wish that these didn't stick out as much. It's also bigger. The new box is definitely bigger than the old box. By a good amount. Wow. Awesome. It's also taller. Huh. That's neat. Doesn't seem like there's as many cards. Even though I don't have card sleeves right now to actually sleeve everything in expansion. This box is way too small and it does that weird thing where somehow if you take all the components out, there's less space in the box. If you take the components out and put them back in, they don't fit right. It, it's, it's weird. It's one of those, like, TARDIS things. So with the new boards, definitely that thickness increases. The box won't stay shut on the original Astronauts if you have the upgraded boards. Which is kind of a shame because of the way they want you to store stuff. But I also have a feeling it's going to put a pressure and damage the dividers. That's, uh, that's not great. Maybe you can manage some finagling. No, it still sticks up a little bit. That's kind of weird. And even that rearrangement, it's still roughly about the same. With the new set, <laughs> that's what it does. That's a lot. <laughs> and it's like, well, how did that happen? I definitely think these, uh, have a huge issue with that. The thicker player boards. I don't know, have some of the original ones in here. So let's take those out. It's still going to have that issue with these packs. And I know it's because the deck boxes are built up. So that's, uh, that's a little weird. The only other game I ever had that do that to me was Botoku, because that game is impossible to put back in its original box unless you just throw everything in there. 
and it's also a pain to organize. Um, yeah, it's a little weird. I know once this stuff is taken out, it'll definitely reduce some of the swelling, but not by much. I don't think everything's going to fit well in this box. It's very concerning. And the dividers run into the same problem again. And even if you manage to lay it all flat, this, just because of the nature of it, I don't understand how this box had to have been popped up when we opened the uh, shrimp wrap. So, just a little food for thought. You definitely uh, can't store everything in the set boxes that they come in, which is a little sad. Because it's uh, still about that <laughs> inch and a half, way too high. Very, very strange. So, other than the standard YouTube stuff, if you like what I do, please subscribe. Leave comments if you got any questions. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I am still continuing my trend of doing the 2024 giveaway, a continuation of the 2023 giveaway from last year. Congratulate Ice Coffee 7 who uh, won the X-Force expansion that I'm mailing out soon. Other than that, take care and GG's.